the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum, invite you to enjoy life, Life with Luigi, a comedy show created by Cy Howard, directed by Mac Benoff, and starring that celebrated actor, Mr. J. Carroll Nash, with Alan Reed as Pasquale. Friends, the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum are glad to bring you life with Luigi because they feel it's a friendly, good-natured show that offers you relaxation and enjoyment. And you know, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum offers you relaxation and enjoyment, too. It's pleasant to chew on a smooth piece of Wrigley's Spearmint whether you're working, shopping, listening to your radio, or doing just about anything. Wrigley's Spearmint Gum tastes good, it's refreshing, and the good, easy chewing gives you comfort and satisfaction. So chew Wrigley's Spearmint Gum often, every day. Millions enjoy it, and you will too. Now, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum brings you Luigi as he writes another letter describing his adventures in America to his mama Basco in Italy. Dear Mamma Mia, there's the one thing I'm crazy about, and that's the holidays in America. There's the one noisy holiday here, Mamma Mia, that's the 4th of July, which is celebrate America's independence from England. That's right, the Mamma Mia. England is a once owned America, but she's no good to keep up with the payments. <laughs> so, but right now is a double holiday Easter and Rose's birthday. Who want to know bigger secret to Mamma Mia? I'm going to save up for $40 since January. And this is Sunday. I'm going to make a big Easter dinner and invite all of my school friends. And a Pasquale and a Rosa. Here you see, this dinner is also going to be a surprise party for us. And don't ask me, Mamma Mia, how old she is. When I'm asking Pasquale, he says she's almost 30. But when I'm looking around her middle, I think she's almost 60. <laughs> And I'm going to buy Rosa a beautiful birthday present to, to surprise her. And, and with the rest of the money, I'm going to buy enough for food for everybody so they should have bust her. <laughs> but right now, Mama Mia, I'm going to my night to school and invite all of my friends to my Easter dinner. I'm going to hardly wait to tell them. <laughs> All right, right Schultz, don't worry about it. Quiet, class, I'll call the roll. Mr. Basco? I'm here. Mr. Howard? Yeah? Mr. Olson? Yeah. Mr. Schultz? Hip and your hop, hip and your hop, hip and your hop. <laughs> Mr. Schultz, stop that. Oh, thank you, Miss Balding. At my age, I'm getting too hippie to hop. <laughs> How about smile, fellow boobers? Let's see that Easter spirit. Hey, uh, well, friends, uh, before I forget, uh, I want everybody to know... You all invited for my big Easter dinner, and this is Sunday. Oh, how nice. Oh, Luigi, that's nice, but won't it be too much trouble for you? Joho, after all, Luigi, you have no wife to cook. Oh, don't you? worry, friends. I- I'm going to cook myself. <laughs> Him, Luigi's going to dive into the pressure cooker and set himself for 30 minutes. <laughs> Don't be so impulsive with that dinner, Luigi. Making a meal for a lot of people is no zinch. Oh, well, don't worry about me. I'm, 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 I'm wonderful a cooker, Schultz. And I'm going to save up so much money. Nobody's got to eat for two days before the dinner. Well, thank you, Mr. Basco. At this time, however, I think we should begin the lesson. Mm-hmm. Class, today I'm going to review some of the more troublesome grammar rules. Mr. Horowitz, you may tell us the plural of calf. Calves. In the plural, the F changes to V-E-S. Good. Uh, Mr. Basco, the plural of jacket. Jackets. Mr. Schultz, the word pants. Pants? Yes, is it singular or plural? But both. It's singular on top and plural on bottom. <laughs> I love those old jokes. <laughs> Mr. Olson, you may tell him the answer. I will be happy to. Uh, the word pants is always plural. Then how about the word trousers? That's always plural, too. Himmel, I can't buy a suit with one pair of pants in this place. <laughs> All right, Mr. Schultz. Mr. Olson, that was very good. Now, let us go on to verbs. Mr. Basco, you may name the two types of verbs. What is it? Active and passive. Mr. Horowitz, define them. With pleasure. 
An active void shows action. A passive void shows passion. <laughs> what? Mr. Horowitz, where did you learn that? Yeah, and where can we get a hold of that book? <laughs> Please, please. Now, will somebody tell us the difference between an active verb and a passive verb? Mr. Schultz. All right. The active verb ain't passive, and the passive verb ain't active. I'm in no mood for jokes. I'll give you a zero for that answer. I'm in no mood for bargaining. I'll take it. (laughs) Mr. Olson, you tell him. To be sure. Uh, The active verb denotes the subject as acting. Uh, The passive verb denotes the subject as acted upon. Correct. Now, Mr. Basco, give a sentence. (laughs) Would you give a sentence illustrating each type of verb? All right. Sentence with the active verb. I'm going to invite the whole class to my Easter party this Sunday and please don't bring nothing because I'm going to supply all the food. There's going to be plenty of wine, the potatoes, the milk, the pies. Please come at six and shop a shop or six o'clock a shop a tank. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Is that one sentence, Mr. Basco? Find Sean Hancock on the bottom and you've got the Declaration of Independence. <laughs> Smile, Miss Spalding. He really wants us for his Easter dinner, can't you see? Well... No, please come, Miss Spalding, because besides it being Easter party, he's is also going to be big surprise party for us. Well, I'd like to. Uh, Sunday, did you say? Yeah, please come, Miss Miss Spalding. I'm, I'm a serve up $40 to make sure there's going to be enough for food for everybody. Now, how could anybody refuse him, Miss Spalding? He's like the, like the Marshall Plan looking for countries. <laughs> Well, sure. I'll be glad to come. Good. Well, I got my girl. Now you fellas pick your own. <laughs> Mr. Schultz. Uh, no, that's right. Uh, I'm going to buy turkey and, and, and a lot of the crumbs that'll be... Crumbs are better. That's the sauce. Crumbs. Oh, wonderful, because last Thanksgiving, you know, the cranberry sauce was so delicious, the turkey ate it up before we did. <laughs> I'll be happy, friends. We're going to have it a wonderful time. Mr. Basco, does Mr. Pasquale know you're making this surprise party for Rosa? Oh, no, no, and please, please, don't uh, nobody tell him. After school, I'm going to invite, the, invite the him and Rosa to the party. Luigi, how much money did you say he was going to spend on food? Well, I'm going to get a $40, uh, kind of for us as a present, and, uh, and as a 30 for the food. Uh-uh. Is so that going to be enough for sure? For six normal people, that's plenty. But with Rosa's appetite included, <laughs> bring your own sandwiches, kid. <laughs> Rosa, stop eating and pay attention. All right, Papa. Now, look, baby, I don't want you should invite anybody to your birthday party. It's just for Luigi. You mean I can't come, Papa? Oh, stop. I mean, Luigi's going to be the only guest. Oh. And can you guess why Luigi's going to be the only one invited, my daughter? Sure. Then there'll be more cake for us. Yes. No. <laughs> and don't do what you did the last year's a birthday cake when you ate up all the candles. <laughs> Look, Bambina, I want you to dress up a special and nice for your party, huh? Wear that black shiny dress that makes you look as skinny, yeah? Oh, Papa, can I wear my Mexican skirt? That makes me look skinny, don't it? Makes you look like a Mexico. <laughs> What a nice, a romantic party is it going to be? Just the three of us. And after a while, I'm going to tip a toe out and go to the movies. Oh! What's the matter? What are you belly aching about? I want to see the picture, too! <laughs> Look, go on and hide. Luigi's are coming. Go in the kitchen before you spoil everything. All right, Hello, Pasquale. Hello, little pumpkin head. <laughs> How was the school today? Oh, it was up pretty good. Hey, your heads are getting the bigger. Huh? Luigi, I bet your brain must have gained 10 or 12 pounds uh-huh. since you started pushing education inside. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, Pasquale, I'm, I'm coming to invite you to big Easter dinner that I'm giving this Sunday. Huh? Luigi, that's a funny thing, but I was going to invite you to a party this Sunday. You? What the? Who else are you invited, Pasquale? Just to you. Pasquale, what are you talking about? Hey, no, you got to come to my party. I, I'm invited to lots of people. I don't care. You got to come to mine. No, Pasquale, the whole thing is crazy. Hey, you got to come to my party. No, you must come to my party. No, wait a minute, Pasquale, because I'm already invited all of my school friends and Miss Spalding, too, and... 
And, and we're going to have a big Easter dinner all the together. Big dinner with everybody. I wanted just the three of us. Yeah, but are you going to be there, Pasquale? Well, in fact, I'm... A, hey, look, I'm... I'm saved for three months for this party, Pasquale, and I'm, and I'm going to get $40 of cash. I see? don't care if you... Uh... Forty dollars, huh? Yeah. <laughs> let me see the money. Yeah, sure, here. Look, here. Yeah, let me hold him, eh? That's right, the forty dollars. Well, thanks, Luigi. This pays for last December's rent. Oh, no, 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 Pasquale, you can't. Uh, no, no, Pasquale, I'm, I'm a promise to pay you everything I'm owed. Sorry, owe you Luigi, I'm, a... I'm a sorry. In the landlords' of union, we got a very strict uh, rule: the uh, NTG. NTG, what's that? No trust for greenhorns. <laughs> no, but Pasquale, how am I going to pay for my Easter dinner? What, what, am, what am I going to tell all of my friends? Tell them whatever you want to tell them. Tell them you're not a Democrat or a Republican. Are you a man or without a party? <laughs> Before we return to Life with Luigi, here's a suggestion that'll make your daily activities more pleasant and enjoyable. Carry a package of delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Gum with you. Chew a stick from time to time. It's really good to get your teeth into a smooth piece of Wrigley's Spearmint. The lively Spearmint flavor freshens your mouth and gives you extra enjoyment and satisfaction. It makes whatever you're doing more enjoyable. So when you start out your day, tuck a package of Wrigley Spearmint chewing gum in your purse or pocket. Be set to enjoy a stick of Wrigley Spearmint any time and any place. Get a few packages of refreshing, delicious Wrigley Spearmint chewing gum. Now let's turn to page two of Luigi Basco's letter to his mother in Italy. Well, my mommy Pasquale just took away my forty dollars, and and I'm not gonna make it the big Easter dinner for my friends. I'm I'm so mad at Pasquale. I'm not tell him what is it for, and I'm I'm feeling terrible. First, I'm a thought that maybe I'm a telephone to my friends and stop everything, but but then I'm a thought I'm I'm have a better idea. I'm gonna get all of the food on the credit, so I'm gonna go to Astro's the fruit store first. Oh, hello, Asta. Uh, you mind if I'm uh, get some fruit from you? On a credit? For you, Luigi, any time. Here, have an apple. Oh, oh apple. <laughs> well, uh, now I'm going to make up the order. Order? Oh, okay, what is it? Well, I'm going to 10 pound apples, 15 pound of grapes, 8 pound of pears, 6 dozen of bananas... And a, and a 12 pound of nuts. Hey, what are you doing, Luigi? Making a Tarzan picture? <laughs> I don't mind giving you credit on fruit if you're hungry, but when you start throwing parties for the zoo. Oh, Astra, I'm, 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 I'm not making a party for the zoo, Astra. I'm, I'm, I'm making a bigger party for, for my friends. I'm sorry, Luigi. For parties, I got no credit. After all, I'm running this fruit market for profits. You think bananas and oranges and apples grow on trees? <laughs> Thank you, Astra. Don't mention it. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Warner. How's it the butcher of business? Oh, pretty good, Basco. What can we do for you today? Well, uh, Mr. Warner, I'm, I'm making a big Easter dinner tomorrow, and I'm ah, going to get... I've got just the thing, Basco. A 20-pound turkey, fit for a king. Isn't that nice? That's a beautiful... <laughs> Hey, I'll go ahead and charge it. Oh, I'm sorry, Basco. That's against company rules. But if you're short on cash, I'll be glad to okay your check. That's no good. My check is short on the cash, too. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Basco. I'm more sorry than you. Well, is it no use? I'm gonna call off for the party. But I'm not gonna never to call him up. I'm 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 too ashamed. I think I'm gonna sit down on the park bench. 
Excuse me, mister. Huh? <laughs> Do you mind if I'm gonna sit down and next to you? Be my guest. <laughs> All right, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Mama, me want to sure do call off for the party, no call off, call off, no call off, call them off, call them off. Uh, would you like a daisy friend to help you make up your mind? <laughs> Excuse me, I'm, <laughs> I'm talking to myself. You ever talk to yourself? Oh, brother, don't remind me. <laughs> What's your trouble, drink? Uh-huh, how do you know? I could tell. We're the same type, soft inside. Uh, no willpower. Well, tell me about it. Well, it's, it's not only drinks, but it's also food and a fruit. Huh? Yeah, and a birthday cake and a present and a no nuts. What? <laughs> Look, friend, maybe you better talk to yourself. <laughs> no, please, please, help me. I'm always a save up on my money for a party for my friends, but, but then somebody is to take it away. I've got nothing to feed them, and I'm ashamed to call them up and tell them about it. Did you say they was your friends? Uh-huh. Then your problem is solved. What? Because a friend is a friend. True blue to the end. <laughs> food or no food. I know. Because I had a friend. My mother. <laughs> she never fed me. Never gave me no food. But still, I was her friend. At the wash you, 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 Mamma Mia. That's right. Mother, <laughs> wherever you are, I want you to know we're still friends. I ain't changed at all. I'm still hungry. <laughs> go, friend, go. Give your party. Invite your friends. Say nothing. And they'll enjoy themselves with friendship. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Oh, thank you. You're making me feel good all over. And I'm going to back it out to my antique shop, fix it up nice and yeah. pretty. And then, uh, goodbye. Give my regards to you, Mom. Thanks, friend. Oh. Hey, look. Uh, maybe you want to come to my party, too? Are you kidding? You ain't got nothing to eat. <laughs> This, there's no food. Yeah, yeah. I'm surprised, Schultz. Yeah, now, don't say anything. He feels terrible enough. She's coming out of the kitchen. Uh, all right, everybody. <laughs> Since this is the party, it's Luigi's idea, I propose a toast to the host. Yeah. <laughs> May he find in America happiness, health, and wealth. Minus 20% for the government. I'm in click, Luigi. Well, thank you, friends. Hi, <laughs> you are so wonderful. I'm... Ha ha, Mama, Mama, what a proposal toast. Uh, Luigi, I don't mind all this toasting, but ain't the champagne a little weak? <laughs> well, uh, well, it's just, uh, it's not the champagne, it's, uh, it's the seltzer. <laughs> uh, what's the difference? Your sure seltzer or champagne? <laughs> oh, yeah, after all, what seltzer if not champagne that's given blood? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's funny, Yes, that, that's really funny. <laughs> and it is. Why don't we all sing a song? Oh, yo, that's a wonderful idea. All right, what song should we sing? Yeah, how about Turkey in the Straw? <laughs> <laughs> right now, I'll settle for a weenie in a bun. <laughs> Please, Mr. Schultz. Uh, how about shrimp boats are coming? Oh, oh I, I'm sorry, Mr. Basco. Uh, that's all right, Miss Pudding. Even I was thinking about the, who's that throw the overalls in the Mrs. Murphy's soup. And, uh... <laughs> Ross, today we're teaching Luigi a big lesson. His friends are camp for a feast and they're going to have a fast. <laughs> Papa, everybody's singing over there. You think Luigi got food someplace? Uh, this I better investigate. Watch the restaurant, Rosa. Stubborn little cabbage puss. Gives me nothing but a trouble and a headache. Since I imported him from Italy, my life is just a one big aspirin. <laughs> uh, Luigi's putting up his hand like he's going to make a big speech. 
I better open up for the door a little. Well, Francis, isn't I used to, to pretend that we all are having a lot of fun? I'm, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to make a confession. <coughs> Never mind the confession. Bring on the food. Oh, sure, sure. That's the trouble. I'm sure some I'm no got enough food. <laughs> Luigi, you're joking, huh? <laughs> that Luigi is pulling our leg. <laughs> <laughs> the way I feel now, if he pulled my leg, my stomach would drop out. <laughs> Oh, he's a suffering good. Mr. Basco, what happened to the $40 you had? Pasquale is a tucker for the rent money. Oh, the oh, rent right. money. Right. Right. Why, tell us. No, no, please, please. I'm, 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 I don't want to talk about it. But, Mr. Basco, didn't you tell Mr. Pasquale that this party was to be a surprise birthday celebration for his daughter? What? Well, I know, Miss Pudding. He's. Well, he's, he's hurt to me so much, I'm, Mama don't even want to tell him. Huh? Now I'm got no food and no birthday cake for us and no present. Oh, I could kill that Pascoli. <laughs> What's he talking about? I could have killed myself. Oh, I'm the stupidest thing that ever lived. I'm a mean, terrible, rotten, stupid. Right now, if I was a twins, I'd have stopped talking to myself for good. <laughs> what am I going to do? i got to make it up with the Luigi. Uh, I, I know. Rosa! Yes, Papa! Put on your apron and get in the kitchen. Are we going to cook them a dinner that would sink in a Queen Mary? But Papa, Don't what? ask her no questions, just to warm up in the oven. I'm going to make a food for Luigi's. You're going to have enough for a hundred years. Stop looking so depressed. Sure, so what if you don't eat? Sure, food isn't so important. And besides, we, we, we're not too hungry, or we should. <laughs> I'm too weak to answer. <laughs> So why don't we stop all hey, this? Hey, hey, Luigi, everybody. Listen, I got a great big idea. Instead of one big Easter party, we're going to have three or four little ones in a row. Three or four little ones in a row? What do you mean? Well, you we'll say? have like a round robin. In my house, we eat the appetizer. I know what you mean, Horowitz. That's a wonderful idea. Appetizer in your house, the entree in my house. Dessert in my house. In my house, my cabinet of soda. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how am I going to thank you for such a wonderful idea? Luigi, I'm the happiest man in the world I thought of it. Go ahead, eat, eat. Yeah, but this is a, that's a delicious. What do you call it? It's called a four spice, chopped liver. It's very tasty, Mr. Horowitz. What is your wife's recipe? Sorry, Miss Balding. That's an international secret. <laughs> Rosa, hurry up with the meatballs while I fix these pies. Turn up the flame. They must be starving in Luigi's stall by now. All right, Papa. And Rosa, don't eat anything. Oh. Yeah, I bet if they saw these meatballs, they'd go crazy. Papa, what do you think's happening to me? Mr. Schultz, this turkey is wonderful. Oh, they were superb. A gourmet delight. Very good, Schultz. Very good. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm eating so much, I think I'm going to bust it. So what's a happy explosion between friends? How's <laughs> <laughs> the spaghetti, Rose? Almost a cup. Almost. Papa. Mm, this lasagna is going to give them an Easter dinner they're never going to forget. <laughs> Rosa, stop looking that way at the pizza. But, Papa, I'm starving, starving. Rosa, listen, right next door is a five starving of people waiting for all this food, and we owe Luigi a lot for the wrong we did to him. Besides, Rosa, why you keep looking at me so funny? I can't help it, Papa. I'm so hungry, you look to me like one big meatball. <laughs> Oh, friends, I'm, I'm, I don't know what to say. I'm, I'm so full up with the tanks. <laughs> so full of food. Ach, Miss Spalding, you make it wonderful coffee. <laughs> well, I did the least. Mr. Olson, this dessert tastes just heavenly. <laughs> yeah. How did this boil? Olson, what do you call it? It looks like the pancakes. In Sweden, we call it platter. Back home, many families eat it, especially on Thursdays, with pea soup. Oh, the pieces. 
Han er disse sovsov til at til delicious, og hva er det kaldt dette? Det var slingenberries. In Sweden, we use it just like applesauce. Go on, old me, keep on talking. I feel like I'm eating a dessert with a travel on. <laughs> you know, friends, I'm so full now, I feel like I ate into 1953. Yeah, me too. If anybody mentioned food to me now, I think I would float away. Yeah. <laughs> well, enough, friends, please. Uh, hey, hey, maybe, maybe we all go back to my antique shop and, and we just uh, sit back and uh, relax and, and maybe just uh, talk, huh? It's a good idea, Luigi. Let's go. Schultz, get up. But impossible. I think the automobile club will have to tow me to Luigi's store. <laughs> Yeah. Is it just so nice to sit, to sit down here and rest, huh? Oh, Joe. Friends, oh. oh, we enjoy the feast fit for a king, by golly. Oh. Yeah, this is one Easter I'll never forget. That food. No, please, don't mention food. It gives my stomach a headache. <laughs> well, I certainly... Come on in, Rosa. Don't drop the pot. All right, stop sitting around, everybody. Happy Easter. Look at what I got, the food. Oh. That's the matter, you all died from starvation. <laughs> oh, Smiley, please, go away. Oh, oh. <laughs> Look, everybody, it's all free, and the house, gratis. Plenty of spaghetti, meatballs, and pizza. No, 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 Pascal, oh, Pascal, oh. You, know, you know, we was all went out, and, and then we was eating at, in each other's houses. Yeah, we had a door-to-door feast. What? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, yeah, go away, Pasquale, and take everything with you. you. Well, it's a serve of me right. I deserve everything. Well, Pasquale, tell the truth. The only thing I'm, I'm feeling bad about now is I um, didn't get a Russian birthday present. If I'm ahead of my Rosa, I would have given you anything you wanted. Hey, you hear that, the Rosa? Anything. And what do you want? A can be bought with the money, huh? You're right, Papa. Luigi, can I have anything I want? Anything, Rosa. Stand back, everybody. All this food belongs to me. <laughs> <laughs> I had a wonderful feast this Easter, and after all, even Russia's got a big birthday present. Seven and a half pounds to be exact. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't a hurry to have a wonderful idea, Mamma Mia, what is it called, Round the Robin. And Mamma Mia, when you get this letter, make yourself a little glass, glass of coffee, because I'm going to have some cake, and we're going to have our own Round the Robin together. He loved his son, Luigi Basco, a little immigrant. Friends, the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum hope you enjoyed tonight's episode of Life with Luigi. And they want to remind you that chewing Wrigley's Spearmint Gum is an inexpensive, enjoyable way to sweeten your breath and help keep your mouth feeling fresh and clean. You see, Wrigley's Spearmint Gum is made to give you real, long-lasting chewing enjoyment. It's smooth and good to chew on. The flavor is delicious and satisfying. And at the same time, it's a long-lasting aid to pleasant mouth freshness. So chew a few sticks of Wrigley Spearmint every day, as millions do. See how good it makes your mouth feel, and see how enjoyable that pleasant chewing is. Get a few packages of Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum invite you to be sure to listen next week at this time when Luigi Basco writes another letter to his mama Basco in Italy. Life with Luigi is a Cy Howard production. Pat Burton is associate producer. The script is written by Mac Benoff and Lou Derman and directed by Mr. Benoff. This is the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>